And welcome back to Saturday Agenda. I'm Joe Pinion. Well, the nature of science requires debate. So why has Google decided to cross the debate on climate change? A YouTube which is owned by Google is eliminating any dissent on climate change from its platforms. Here to discuss is Gregory Wrightstone. He is a climate change analyst and geologist and the executive director of the CO2 Coalition in Arlington, Virginia. And Quill Robinson is the vice president of government affairs and the American Conserv uh, Conservation coalition uh, so you know let's run through this uh, quill uh, you know uh, quill I'll start with you you know how do we make sure uh, that we can actually ensure that the conversation about climate change uh, does not become something that big tech actually prevents us from having which in the process likely hinders our ability to get to solutions that move society forward Absolutely, Joe. Well, that's a you know that's a really important question here, and I think that fundamental to science, fundamental to free society, is open and free debate. And it's clear that Google uh, does not want to allow that to happen right now. So I think that we need to unequivocally condemn that. That being said, we as conservatives need to stand up and say yes, climate change is happening. It's a serious issue that we can address. And I, I think that you know what the left is trying to do here, and these progressive corporations like Google is uh, marginalize us and put us to the side and make us look ridiculous. And so I think it's really important here that we lean in as conservatives and say, look, we need open and free debate, but also on this issue of climate change, we have real solutions. Absolutely. Uh, what want to talk, uh, talk a little bit about, you know, what the other side of this issue is. Uh, sir, I know that you have... Uh, you know, working with the CO2 coalition in Arlington, Virginia. Um, again, some of your colleagues not able to have that conversation. What, what, what do you actually think in, in many ways is the great threat here uh, presented by Google in this decision? Well, they need to silence people like me and the great scientists, these distinguished scientists we have at the CO2 coalition. We have physicists, astrophysicists, climatologists, energy experts, and we believe that the modest warming combined with increasing CO2 are leading to an earth and its ecosystems that are thriving and prospering. By almost every metric you look at, uh, that, that can be confirmed. Uh, but this censorship, they need to silence us because we speak sensible truth and provide the science behind it. Let me just give you two examples from the last 24 hours with me. I had two, and this isn't Google, but it's, it's Facebook, uh, where I had two posts. One post was... Uh, a chart of electricity generation in the mid-Atlantic states in D.C. yesterday at 3 p.m. that showed that less than 1% of all the electric was being generated by wind. Because if I look out my window here, there's not a leaf moving on the trees across the Potomac River. And that's because the wind's not blowing. It's at seven-tenths of percent of all the electricity generated yesterday. And that was, I tried to promote it, and that was rejected. I went against their policy. Second was uh, a wonderful... Uh, op-ed written by Vijay Jairaj, our uh, research associate in Bangalore, India, talking about energy poverty and how India really needed and Pr Prime Minister Modi needs to produce abundant, affordable, reliable energy from coal generation. And that was removed. That was there. I, I haven't had one one post there removed. And, and just two weeks ago, I was banned permanently from LinkedIn. Uh, yes, LinkedIn. And it was, I post scientifically factual data. They need to silence people like me that make sense, uh, that promote this idea of a non, that no, we're, we're not experiencing man-made catastrophic warming. Well, um, we're just not. It, the facts, the well, science, and the data support that contention. Well, I, I think the science is certainly debatable on that, and I think there are plenty of people on the other side who would say the exact opposite. Quill, I uh, want to come back to you because if you look at, at what's happening here, though, uh, to Greg's point, when you start having the nature of science, science is about facts laid up against facts, right? Study after study after study. We know that in many things, uh, those things in science are not static. Uh, that we had physics and we had uh, l greater understanding of how the world worked that led to quantum th physics and string theory. And as we learn more about the world, uh, the constructs that help us understand the world also evolve. Uh, to Greg's point, how can we again have the conversation where iron sharpens iron, that the best arguments rise to the top if some of those arguments effectively have been stricken into the wilderness forever? 
Absolutely. Well, you know, the, pr the First Amendment protects our ability to have our own opinions, right? And that's fundamental to our to our society here. I, I do want to push back on this a little bit, though, and say that we're not entitled to our own facts. And, you know, if you talk to scientists, most of the scientists, they do agree that climate change is very much happening. Um, but not only that, if you talk to farmers in Iowa or you talk to folks who live on the coast in Louisiana, um, if you talk to the Farm Bureau, they know that climate change is happening. And so, um, you know, as a conservative, as a young conservative, I think it's really important that, of course, we protect the First Amendment and open and fair debate. But we do need to be very clear about our facts here. And the fact is, is that climate change is happening. Um, but it's also important that conservative voices and conservative solutions to climate change have the space to be heard. And I think that that's something that I'm worried about as well. Um, because on many different issues, whether it's nuclear energy or carbon capture or natural climate solutions, uh, I'm also worried that uh, folks on the left might censor these more common sense, pragmatic solutions to climate change and that we're going to be left with the Green New Deal or nothing. And I think that most Americans, most conservatives, the young folks that I talk to don't want to have to choose between climate denial and climate alarmism. Um, and so I want to make sure that we have to that we protect that space to have that healthy debate about the best solutions to ensure that we address climate change, but also keep a strong economy. Uh, absolutely. Uh, going to have you guys come back with us on the other side of the break to talk about what some of those better arguments can be. Uh, stick with us. You're watching Saturday Agenda here on Newsmax. We'll be right more right, ba right back with a little bit more. Welcome back to Saturday Agenda. Well, big tech censorship striking again. YouTube and Google announcing a new policy this week that will now demonetize anyone who questions any aspect of climate change. Let's continue our conversations with Quill Robinson and Gregory Wrightstone. I uh, want to get, uh, Greg, I know you wanted to get in here, but uh, to that point right now, to some of what Quill was saying, would our time not be better spent talking about some of the realities of how we can uh, work on 21st century solutions uh, to powering uh, the 21st century America. And when you look at what China is doing, they are simultaneously leading the world in pollution, but at the same time leading the world in solar panel production, leading the world in, in many of the wind turbine productions. So they are coming out of this both barrels um, and us shackling ourselves uh, to either one way or the highway seems like a bad policy, no? Well, I, I just have to address some false and libelous comments made by Mr. Robinson at the end of the last segment. Well, I, Four well, times in less than a minute. Well, hold Four on, times I don't know about libelous, he, uh, he, he called me a, a science denier, a climate denier, and associated the distinguished scientist of the CO2 in that, co in that context. Uh, I'm an expert reviewer for the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, a degree geologist. Quill, what are your rec what, are, what are your qualifications? Well, hold on, we're, we're not going to. We're, we're, well, well, hold on, sir. I, I don't think I don't denier. think that we're going to do, do do that, sir. But I, I think again, we we well, can have a we can have a robust and healthy debate. Then uh, you can stop insulting me. I, I I don't believe that those were personal insults. But uh, yeah, so how about this? I I if anyone was offended, we'll end the conversation here. Uh, Gregory Wrightstone, we Quill Robinson, thank you so much. Truly appreciate you joining us. Also, be sure to watch President Trump's Save America rally in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, we will be airing the rally live starting with a pre-show at 5 p.m. Eastern time hosted by Heather Childers.